Alright guys, we are making a makeshift chicken coop because we have these meat chickens that are now old enough supposedly to lay eggs. No eggs yet, but we're hoping. I'm making your house for you. These are the scariest chickens we've ever had. Are they? We got this fake egg, so hopefully we can encourage them to lay. All right, there's this little nesting box. Hermione, you keep helping, okay? These are from McMurray Hatchery, and these are big red broilers. Now, a lot of people say you can't breed these kind of broilers because the second batch aren't as efficient at growing as fast, but I'm not too concerned about that, really, because normally when we raise chickens for meat, we just kind of let them roam the yard and eat slower, and we don't mind if it takes longer for them to get to wait. So we're just gonna go for it and see how it works. This is my experiment. So the plan is when we want them to lay eggs so that we can hatch out for meat chicken, we're gonna put them in here and we're gonna let them do their thing breed together and then lay eggs And then when we're done collecting the eggs We'll let them out in the pasture and let them be with all the other chickens. It'll work. I think it'll work it's a Good plan. So then this way, you know every once in a while when we want to raise a group of meat birds We'll just put them in here get some eggs then let them be with the regular chickens. Yeah Got a really good perch for them to sleep at night Got everything they need so we've got one rooster that has a rooster collar on, so he's more quiet. <laughs> and then we've got three hens. Yeah, he's definitely a rooster. He's way bigger than our other rooster in there, and he is actually a lot louder with the rooster collar on. I know, I wonder if we need to tighten it a little bit. Yeah, we might need to. Meat birds also tend to be a lot bigger and meatier, so we want them to not be in here all the time. We want them to be out in the pasture and get exercise and stay healthy. So hopefully this is just a temporary thing. They'll lay eggs and then we'll be done. We'll see how they do. I think he has a favorite out of the three hens that he has because he always sticks by that one and that one always follows him, but these two kind of just like do their yeah. own thing together. Yeah, the lightest color girl. My favorite thing about coming out in the morning is to see Luna's head popping out over the cages. Which one did Ethan put you in last night? Luna? Oh, there you are. Did, did he put you with the babies? He separated Tatum and Winnie. Doesn't he know they're best friends? Lydia, we only have two goats for milking right now. It's pretty easy. <laughs> Little Tilly. Tilly's leg is pretty much back to normal now. She's a little sensitive about us touching it, but that's she, normal. Yeah, she's always been like that. Hi, Chloe. You've got two kitties so far coming over this morning. Oh, and a mini. Scout never comes over here anymore. We no. only ever see her when she's hungry and waiting for us to fill up her food. Morning breakfast around the feeding station. We've got the big ones on this side, and the reason why it's crooked, I would suspect, it's because some little goat, yep, Tatum, is just gonna situate herself right here on the edge. Surprisingly, they don't fight too much during feeding time. It's pretty normal for goats to headbutt each other a little bit during that time. But so far, they do pretty well together. Not too much fighting. Willow, come on, Willow. Willow's still our star milker. She's always a little bit on the thin side, but I've learned that that's pretty dairy to be thin and put all of her energy into our milk production. So we always give Willow a little bit more food, just making sure she always has enough. She's done. Come on, Karen. Come on.
These boys are starting to smell. <laughs> All right, guys. Give me a kiss. Oh, Kevin, he's peeing on you. Well, he didn't mean to pee on you, but you were in the way. Okay, it was just on my shoes. Yum. Didn't feel it on my skin. <laughs> All right, boys. Have a good day. Hopefully some girls come and visit you. <laughs> yeah. Especially you, Winston. So if you're not familiar, Zorro has already bred Stella and she's pregnant. And while Fern is pregnant, she was actually bred to Iverson, a buck that we don't own. We also bred Winston to Tilly. And so we're gonna find out in maybe a couple weeks here if she is actually pregnant. So the last one on the list would be Willow. But I have sort of a different plan for Willow and I'm gonna share that in the next video. So we'll talk more about the breeding plans for Willow later. All right, Stella, go for it. Okay, Lydia and I are gonna do the last ultrasound on Stella. Stella is 50 days, and by this time we should be able to see pretty easily the formed little babies and finally count them. Oh, there we go. Okay. Mess. <laughs> Mess of babies. Yeah. There's like a lot There's of tiny a lot. circles where you're like, it's not a baby. We definitely see one yeah. right here. And then the so big one, one in the middle of it. And then there's the bis this big one here. Um, and maybe that the, one up then there. there's that one up there and over here we s yeah there is one in there there that definitely is one in there it's a little bit smushed at the top so let's see if we can see any more than four there's kind of a clump of cells yeah. right here so it's hard to know if one of those is going to get resorbed or if they're going to keep growing because it's yeah it looks like there is like three right there but you're like oh we don't know there's like one two and three yeah there's like three separate little ones but they're I don't think they're they're so developed. much smaller compared to the big fat ones yeah so that's what you worry about like will she have a runt or is it um, just gonna kind of resorb there's definitely one inside of there I think it's moving so yeah we've got one two three four for sure yeah because I can see them all moving Okay, so the final count is four. We think Stella has four. Um, there may be one hidden. Time will tell, but yeah, she's definitely pregnant. She's definitely hanging on to these babies and she's gonna probably have the biggest litter of the year. We've been getting a lot of questions about the little ultrasound machine we use. It's from a company called IMV Imaging. I was thinking the best way to buy one is to go in with a bunch of other goat owners and share the cost, but I'll go ahead and link in the description below if you guys are interested. They were really nice to let us borrow it during this breeding time, but we haven't purchased one yet for ourselves. They look so, they look like fingers. <laughs> when you touch her at her, she doesn't do yeah, too bad. Yeah, I out. think she's gonna be a really good milker because she doesn't mind. She squats. Yeah, she squats and she doesn't mind that we touch her. A lot like Luna, actually. Yeah. But here's what Fern does when we bring her on the stand. Come on, Fern. Oh, she's getting big. Look at that cute little udder, Liddy. So goats normally form udders as they get closer to delivering. And you know that they're getting really close when they get bigger and bigger and they get so big and tight. So it looks like Fern's moving along really well. And let me just show you though, uh, she's gonna be a difficult one to train. So I gave Fern her food. She's all situated on the stand. And now we're gonna start milking. <laughs> Oh, she's <laughs> she's actually doing. Oh, oh no no! Oh, no. If, no, Fern, you're gonna fall off. She's a little bit flighty about it. She'll kick and try and like stamp on your hands to get you away from her. So Fern is gonna need a lot of training to get her to be a good milker, but that's okay. We're up for it. We've done it a lot of times. Well, guys, we're almost done with this master bedroom. We're not completely done. I'm still waiting on a few little uh, like art pieces that are gonna come. Just know it's not finished yet. But so far, Kevin and I are hanging up some lights. We're trying to hang them from the ceiling because I don't really want them over the back wall. And hopefully we can hide it on this side um, as it gets to the ceiling. But yeah, so far it is coming together. It'll be fun to finish the whole thing and have everything put together like I want. We're also doing the last little finishing touches on the bathroom and once we get all done with that, I'll show you it as well. So stay tuned, it's gonna be amazing. I've just gotta finish the last little bits here, but 
I'm excited. We've been working on this all summer. It's been a fun summer project since it's so hot outside. We do the projects inside during the summer and then once it gets cool, we'll be out there doing all sorts of stuff with the animals. <laughs> no, don't put any lights in the plant. Guys, Kevin helped me figure this out. This is why you need to marry an engineer because he figured out the best way to make it look good. Doesn't look like that many lights right now on the camera, but it looks really bright in here. Yeah. Once we tuck all those back, it'll look good at night. Meanwhile. That's not a toy. Hey, mom. Yeah. Right there by your foot. Oh my gosh. I think it's a catfish. It must have died and decomposed down in the pond. Well, Dad wondered if the if the grass carp died. Oh, oh yeah, that's probably what it was. Because we haven't seen them that's for a few. Though. That's, got, that's covered in algae. Which one? Look what they found. Crazy, right? Wow. We've had a couple random fish go in holes and die. Yeah. So I don't even know what that is from, but you having fun? Yeah. <laughs> One last cleaning job before the end of the summer. And Lydia gets the fun <laughs> job of smushing all the water out of the algae bag. Good job. When we wake. All right guys, we got a big slab of meat and we're gonna make something totally new tonight. It'd be a lot easier if I bought stew meat that was already cubed, but here we are. So I'm gonna cube it up and stick it in a Ziploc bag. We've got olive oil, vinegar, a bunch of herbs, and a little bit of sugar. And then we'll close it on up and mix it all together. Now this is gonna be our marinade and we're gonna keep this in the fridge overnight. The next day, I'm gonna chop up a bunch of peppers and onions and then put it on some skewers because guys, we're making kebabs or kebabs or speedies, which is a term that I just learned from Sherry of Two Family Homestead, where she made this kebab looking dish that she calls speedies. So tonight we're gonna use her recipe and whatever you call them, I just know they're gonna be good. Now, while those are cooking on the grill, I decided to make a delicious kind of fall salad. So I'll start by cooking up some quinoa and then toasting some almonds. I've got a bunch of kale that I've chopped and now I'm going to add a little bit of salt and massage. When I first saw a recipe that said massaged kale salad, I thought that's pretty prissy, <laughs> but I've since learned that there's actually a reason why you massage your kale a little bit. It's so you don't feel like you're eating cardboard when you eat your salad. It helps kind of wilt it down a little bit so it has more of a lettuce texture instead of a kale texture. <laughs> so to the massaged kale, we're going to add chopped up apples, the quinoa, and the sliced toasted almonds. Then finally, we're gonna add this sort of honey Dijon dressing. That's right guys, I opened the honey bucket and we used just one little spoonful. It's gonna take us a lot longer to get through this this time I think, <laughs> unless I start baking a ton more. This was a perfect combination because you have the crunch from the apples and the almonds and then the quinoa is a nice like hearty grain in there. Then you've got the massaged kale so you're not eating cardboard, you're eating like a very soft kale. And this salad was the perfect complement to our kebabs. They were tender because they had been marinated overnight and the grilled veggies with it were perfect. So I'll put the recipe in the description and you can try it and tell me what you think. Thanks for joining us today, guys. I'm excited about this meat chick experiment. We'll see if it works, but I think I'm more excited about fern delivering in just a couple of weeks. So stick with us, we got some fun stuff coming. If you wanna see what happened at the beginning of this whole meat chick experiment, click right here.